that star spangled banner yet wave oh, the land of the NBA on 2K Sports. Hi everyone, here with analysts Grant Hill and Clark Kello. I'm Brian Anderson, Ali LaForce, our reporter. And the power rankings look more concrete every day. Plenty of games behind us here in December. They're having a little bit of trouble right now, hanging in the middle of the league. Well, right now for Detroit, they're a team that still feels like they can get better. The season is young, so they are still hopeful that they can improve their ranking. And let's go straight over to the sideline for a report before they tip off. Hey, Allie. Well, you may have noticed that Joel Embiid hits the court a lot. He said, quote, I've learned it during my rehab with a foot injury. The specialist told me to limit the impact on my body. Every time I'm in a situation that'll put extreme stress on my leg, I've got to dive or just roll onto the floor. All right, Allie, thanks. And these teams both look to operate in the post more than most. Grant, why is that becoming rarer these days? Yeah, there's such an, a desire now in the game to keep the court wide open and spread and give the great players an opportunity for driving lanes and creating plays for themselves and others. And so having big guys inside in the post really clogs up the space and really hurts a team's ability to spread the floor. Personally, I'm not a big fan of that. I think post play should be a part of any a team's attack. But that's the state of today's game. Good, bad, or indifferent. A look at the 76ers starting group. Harris and Embiid make up the front court. Ben Simmons is out there with Matisse Thibel. And it's Green in at the three. And for Detroit, Blake Griffin out there with Mason Plumley. Then there's Derrick Rose. Then it's Jeremy Grant. And it's Ellington in at the two. And it's Thibel missing. Plumley unable to get that one and Philadelphia the other way now coming into this having knocks to win against Boston in their last game what about their offense it was a well-oiled machine getting them high quality looks time and time again boy it really showed the trust they have in one another I love how they got after it and you could feel that they were playing for each other and that one's good Simmons and, you know, this is the area where Simmons is most effective, mainly due to his size and athleticism. Rose outside to the middle. Griffin in the post, pounded by Harris. Griffin's shot is off. Yeah, we're not used to seeing him get bottled up like that. Wow. Outside, Dybul. Outside, green. Clock at six. MB. It's deflected. First quarter, just over a minute and a half in. Ran outside. Now here's Plumley. From eight feet away, MB brings a double team. Here's Ellington. And again, the Pistons missing. And the shooter had very little space on that attempt. And guys, that's exactly the kind of high-impact defense they want to see out of him. Pass to Harris. Here's Thibault. And the shot is good. Harris making the play. Yeah, that's good vision from Harris. I mean, he draws so much attention himself, so he's become a capable passer. Out to the right wing. Harris against Griffin. Over Harris. Griffin's shot is off. I don't know if you can credit the defense for that. It was just a missed opportunity. And we really don't see too many big men in today's game who handle the basketball as much as Blake Griffin. But whether he's posting up or running pick and rolls, he's just so comfortable with the ball in his hands.
things just aren't going their way, he clearly wants to talk it over. And you know what, guys? If for nothing else, just to slow things down a little bit, change it up somewhat. Now here's Rose. Last game, 26 points for him. Need to get one up quick. And here's Griffin outside. And again, the Pistons missing. Philadelphia with the ball. They've gone on an 8-0 run. Outside Simmons. Pass to Harris. Embiid with it. And so he draws the foul. Headed to the line to shoot a pair. There's no denying, B.A., that Joel Embiid is the embodiment of the 76ers. As a matter of fact, the man's name is the process, for crying out loud. I mean, he's all in on this team, and the city is all in with Take him. They love his personality, and his Two talent shots. is unquestioned. And he knocks down the first one. Well, Clark, it's a bit of a love-hate relationship now with Embiid in Philadelphia. Well, I love the young man's skill set and his personality. He's real and he's a tad raw at times, but hey, in Philly, he said he could be the hero or villain last year. And I think he just loves getting into it, engaging with folks. He can give it and receive it. Um, but deep down, I think there's tremendous respect between Embiid and the city of brotherly love. Now here's Rose. Well, he hasn't scored yet, but I'm sure that'll change. Out of bounds, it'll go to the Sixers. Well, he just didn't make the catch, didn't look the ball into his hands. He must have thought the ball was going somewhere else. For Philadelphia, they've gone three of five shooting so far. Now Thibel, pass to Harris. Here's Embiid, lays it up and banks it in. Defensively, their effort hasn't been great early on. Giving up too many open shots. I mean, that's what's happening here. They look to me to be a bit sluggish. We've seen some hot starts and some ugly starts early in the season. Grant, you know I love watching that scoreboard. Now. So how long should teams wait before they start worrying about their record? B.A., I've been on teams with both hot and ugly starts, so I know a thing or two about this. But I think there's a rule of thumb about 20 to 25 games is enough of a sample size to get a real sort of indication of what this particular team is. You know, obviously, uh, schedule, road trips, a lot of things to factor in. But usually, about 25 games, 20, maybe even 30 games, then you can start to get to a point where you can maybe worry about the team and if changes are needed. And what's working here, each guy is willing to make the next pass. Rose outside. Pass to Griffin. 
And it's out of bounds. The Pistons able to retain possession here. He had the right idea, just couldn't come up with the swipe. You know, fellas, one second quicker, and that's going the other way. Feel the frustration building with each miss. Ooh, man, this thing was turning into a soccer game. A lot of action and not many points. Now, here's Green. Launches it. Here's Embiid. Oh, and makes it with the kiss. Embiid's got eight. And they've settled in quickly today. A nice flow and rhythm to their offense. Yeah, they're lasered in. I mean, really making the most of their possession. Here's Rose. Boy, he's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. Pass to Simmons. Now Embiid. Shoots over Grant. That's good from Embiid on the assist from Simmons. He's got 10. And why go away from attacking inside if the D has no answer for you? Grant outside. Now here's Plumley. Down low. Here's Griffin. Pass to Ellington. Oh, got a piece of it. And it's out of bounds to the Pistons as Detroit retains possession. Rose against Simmons. With some arc. Hey, it's blocked by Simmons. And whether it's the defensive effort or just bad offense, they're holding their opponent to a very low field goal percentage. Bottom line is, they're ahead on the scoreboard, and that's all that matters. Boy, I like their energy coming in. <laughs> Terrific execution so far. And you know, it's an all-out effort they've come in with. Very aggressive offense so far. And the Pistons with possession here. Following the score by Philadelphia. Here's Griffin. Pass to Ellington. Fires the three. He buries it from three. Boy, just a lovely dish by Griffin. Philadelphia with the ball. They're on a 20-5 run. Now Embiid. He's checked by Plumley. Embiid passes to Green. Harris outside. Now Embiid. Over Plumley. No good on the fadeaway. Detroit has gone one for five from deep in this first. Struggling from that area. Here's Rose. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game from him. Well, he has not been sharp this period. Seems to be a little flustered out there, too. Here's Embiid. And count it. Now five for seven. Boy, Embiid wants to own the inside on both sides of the floor. He is a force in the paint and relishes hitting those boards. Now here's Rose. Pass to Plumley. Inside. Tipped. Just five to shoot. From deep, Rose. The rebound by Ben Simmons. He's got to be mad at himself. Won't get a better look than that. Harris outside. Up top, Embiid. So it'll be two free throws. He was fouled in the act of shooting. It goes on Mason Plumley. Well, I tell you what, so hard to guard all that size. I mean, Embiid is an absolute monster. And he knows how to draw fouls, too. Shooting two. The free throw drops for Embiid. I tell you, Joel Embiid possesses remarkable talent. I mean, this big guy is graceful and strong. He's a real matchup problem for everybody. And so he hits both. And here's Wright. Pass to Graham. Back 
to eight. To the inside. Here's Okafor. Five to shoot. There's Jackson with the three. Joel Embiid with the board. Embiid's got rebound number seven tonight. Now here's Simmons. He's guarded closely. Pass to Howard. With a nine footer and the foul on the shot. So he'll take two from the free throw line. And there's the whistle. Foul on the Detroit Pistons. An aggressive player who draws attention. Howard is used to getting hit by the defense and plays quite well through contact. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. No good on that one. You know, Howard, a physical and muscular, authoritative big guy who intimidates most knights. Um, his physicality, very impressive. And the second free throw is good. Here's Wright. He had a 15-point outing in their last game against Atlanta. Pass to Graham. Back to Wright. Five on the clock. From deep three-point range. Howard grabs the miss. Would you say testing the limits of his range there? You know, guys, I think he's got confidence to shoot it from anywhere, but he could have gotten a better one than that. Now here's Embiid. He had 25 points in the win against Boston. And really, the story for me was his incredible defensive effort. One of the most impressive shot-blocking efforts you'll ever see. And so it looks like the Sixers will retain possession here. And now another look at that mobile one block defensive performance. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those are the plays that get you a lead and keep you a lead as well. Here's Maxi. Right, always working hard at the defensive end, doing a nice job with the solid contest there. They need something good to happen here. Yeah, they've gone way too long without a score. Grant, right side. Back to right. Just five on the clock. On the take. Oh, and there's the whistle on the shot. So two free throws for him coming up. Well, you know, you've got to really appreciate DeLon Wright's uh, relentless desire to get better. I mean, this guy is constantly trying to hone his craft. Two shot. First free throw is good. Both shots good from the strike. Here's Maxi. He had a 12-point outing in their last game against Boston. Yeah, what about his work on the glass? I mean, he was an all-around contributor to a winning effort. Now here's Milton. It's an 18-point lead. The baseline J. And he didn't get quite enough under that one. That's a decent look for him. He just couldn't convert. And count that. Two points and a chance for one more at the line. That close in against a way shorter defender, you could just put up two. First person foul, team second.
Minute 37 left in the first quarter of the game. Here's Milton. But he stays with it. Pass to Embiid. Shoots over Grant. Kept alive. There's the block. And the reach of Oakland will not be understated. He's a rat. He's very good at getting those big balls up quickly and batting shots away. Now here's right. Here's the three. The shot by Mikhail Luke. No good. <laughs> the way they've gotten after rebounds has been impressive. Yeah, sensational is a really good word for it. They're tearing it up on the glass. Maxine. Here's Howard. Hey, good work on the boards as they picked up the second chance points. And the 76ers lead by 17. Grant outside. There's 38 seconds left in the first. Back to right. Six to shoot. Got a piece of it. And you know, this is a definite strength of Howard's game. I think he's a rim protector of an elite level. Philadelphia has gone only two of six from the three-point line in this first quarter. And here's Maxi. What? No scoring yet from him, but that's likely to change. Pass to Embiid. Shoots over Grant. No good off the glass. The fadeaway was the right shot there because it got his attempt away from the defender. And the touch was poor. And after just one quarter of play, a double-digit differential on the scoreboard. Sixers ahead, leading by 17. And we'll be back in just a minute with the start of the second quarter. And chatting earlier with Ben Simmons, he addressed the scrutiny that players have to deal with on a daily basis. For me, it, it comes with blocking criticism from people I don't really need to hear from. You know, I don't mind. Everyone has their opinion. Everyone's going to say something, um, which is fine. But at the same time, i got to worry about, you know, what I need to focus on. And with social media now, blocking out the noise has become harder than ever. <laughs> the truth is, people like to criticize others, B.A. We should really be celebrating what Simmons has accomplished at a very young age. So far through one quarter, it's been a lopsided game. We'll see if that changes here in the second. A comfortable margin for the 76ers here, guys. Well, a big differentiator was their ability to generate offense by pounding the glass. Oh, there's no doubt about it, guys. Without those second chance points, this game would have had a much different feel to it. And the 76ers looking at who they've got. Ben Simmons is out there with Seth Curry. Then there's Furkan Korkmaz. Then it's Dwight Howard. And it's Harris in at the four. And he makes a first. You know, one thing that emerged from the events of the past year, Grant, is what an important voice NBA players have in the community and the platform and the ability to share those opinions on a daily basis. You know, so true, B.A. I am incredibly proud of the players in this league understanding the power of their voice and the desire to use it to affect change. And we saw that last year, players at all levels, the high-end elite players, the world players, everyone coming together to speak out against social and civil injustices. Just incredible to witness and to be a part of that NBA family and community. And keeping us updated from the sideline, Allie LaForce. Pistons ownership has set the goal to always field a competitive team. Coach Dwayne Casey has said that effort and togetherness are the bars he measures the team by. Win, lose, or draw. But guys, with the team struggles drawing attendance, that need to win games year in and year out will remain. All right, Allie, thank you. Now here's Simmons. Nine points in his last outing. Harris with the drive. And Harris throws it down. You know, we talk a lot about athleticism, guys. It's important. And right there, Harris used his will to create for himself. Here's Wright. Pass to Okafor. And here's Griffin. 
from behind the arc. And the basket by Mikhailu. He has six. Boy, from the looks of it, it appears the defense is fine with him taking that shot, but he makes them pay when they do. Here's Harris, defended by Griffin. Here's Howard. Offensive rebound. Over Okafor. Howard's shot's good. Howard's got five now. And they're up considerably because of their efforts on the glass. Yeah, rebounding has been a big key in this one. They've asserted their will and have taken control on the glass. And here's Griffin outside. And the Pistons, another three! A much improved three-point shooter. Griffin understands the value of bigs that can stretch the floor. Simmons with it. Pass to Harris. A shot from the mid-range. Here's Howard. That one drops. Three for six now. Hey, they're just getting pushed around inside. Yeah, you can't say that with enough emphasis. I mean, the defenders are just not being aggressive enough down low. You got to play with some physicality in the paint. Here's Mikhailuk. Six points for him. To the paint. Griffin in the post, hounded by Harris, and Griffin gets it to go. Well, I tell you, when Okafor sees a wide-open teammate, he really zips the ball over to set him up for a clean look at the bucket. Now, for those joining us now, we're in the second quarter, about three minutes gone by. Harris on the wing. Shoots over Griffin. Here's Howard, and he converts the layup. And the 76ers lead by 18. They've been so active on the offensive glass. Those second chance points have really come in bunches. Yeah, they certainly have been. You'd like to knock down that first one, but if you don't, then the second shot is the next best thing. Yeah, you know, guys, this has been far from his best game. A disappointing outing for both him and the team. They get the rebound. And he banks in the layup. Howard's got eight points in the quarter. Just make sure you keep getting him touches. I mean, you love what he's doing at the offensive end. Don't go away from it. Pass to Mikhailuk. Out left to the wing. Rose outside. Puts it up. And it's Philadelphia with the rebound. Wide, wide open and still surprisingly wasn't able to cash in. Outside Simmons. Harris with it. Howard inside. And it's Howard finishing it off. There are not many better on the offensive glass than Howard. He's a flat out beast, especially if you don't box him out. Rose outside. Pass to right. Griffin with it. Hounded by Harris. Shot is up. And Griffin gets it to go. Griffin's got seven. Yep, you know, after a scoreless first period, he's really turned it up a notch. Building some momentum. Over to the wing. Back to Simmons. Over right. On the wing, Curry. Another shot. And that's two points on the layup. Curry's gotten his second bucket on the night. Hey, when Seth Curry sees holes in the defense, he pounces on them. Pass to Mikhailuk. Now Okafor. Down low. Here's Griffin. Out to Rose. Jacks up a three. And the Pistons, another three. I like the awareness Rose shows there, guys. I mean, good feel that time from Rose to put it up right off the catch. And B.A., your heart goes out to him. And over his career, five separate surgeries for Derrick Rose. But he's making a remarkable comeback. And of course, he said, everybody goes through adversity. It's all about how you want to take it all on. Here's Mikhailu. He has six. It seems like every miss ends up in his hands. He's been unreal. Tell you what, those are crazy numbers, guys. I mean, believe me, I was a good rebounder in my day. It is not easy to corral that many boards in one night.
Now here's Harris. Got a hand on it. Second chance shot. Well, he's got such length at 6'5 in the backcourt. Perhaps surprised the shooter there and came up with the block. Pass to Griffin to the left wing. Here's Mikhailuk. And he got the whistle on the way up. So he'll be headed to the line for a pair. And Derrick Rose said he feels he's making history with all that he's overcome. I agree. I mean, what he went through, it was hard. Of course, he said, I quit a couple times, but I never gave up. You have to admire his resiliency, and now that is being rewarded. First one falls for him. Well, Grant, you were one of those uber versatile players back in your day, and now versatility is a key, especially on the defensive end. I love what you said there, B.A. Yes, we think of versatility, we always think offense, but defensively, it's just as important. And in this style of play that we're in in today's game, you need guys who can guard multiple positions. They can guard and bang with big guys. They can guard on the perimeter against smaller guards. Uh, guys who have that kind of defensive versatility are a huge asset to a good ball club. Here's Maxi. Well, he hasn't put up any points yet in this one. Green, the pass to Embiid. Out to Harris. The three is up. He's off on that one. And Detroit the other way now. They come into this one following the loss to Atlanta. You know, in that game, it was just too much disparity in effort level between the two teams, especially on the glass. You know, I think that was the big difference in the game. One team was pounding the glass relentlessly, while the other team, not so much. Maxi, great positioning on the putback. And the 76ers lead by 19. They've been a little soft with their defense on the interior. Yeah, and they're really getting pummeled on points in the paint here. Pass to Ellington over Milton. And out of bounds, the 76ers will take it. Jackson, he's checked in for the Pistons. Here's Maxi. Pass to Embiid. Now here's Milton. Harris outside. Down to five on the shot clock. Off target from three-point range. You know, it's really surprising that they're up at this point given that he struggled so mightily. Here's Ellington. And again, the Pistons missing. Philadelphia has gone one of three from three-point land here in the second quarter. Pass to Maxi. And here's Embiid, defended by Jackson. Outside for Green. 4-3. Pure from three-point range. Green's got six points. Exactly what Green is known for, a terrific three-point shooter. Continues to do damage from out there. Shoot that! Now here's Grant, pounded by Harris. It's stolen by Green. Looking to end this cold spell. And he was fouled in the act of shooting. Opportunity for a three-point play here. Hitting only 20% from the field this quarter. He might want to start getting others involved. Mind the lanes. Mind the lanes. One shot. And the free throw, no good. Well, the NBA had a plan in place pretty quickly on how to resume play during the pandemic. Grant, the bubble was a success. It really was, B.A., and you have to tip your hat to the NBA and its leadership. 
you know, Adam Silva, Mark Tatum, Kathy Barons, uh, they were very thoughtful, very deliberate in terms of how to restart the NBA bubble in the midst of this pandemic. And you know what? We didn't have a situation that was a petri dish. We were able to focus on basketball, great play, individual performances, team performances, and ultimately able to crown a champion. So kudos to the NBA for a fantastic job resuming play. Now here's Grant. Right outside. Shot clock at five. Pass to Grant. Looking to end the run. Ooh, rejected by Harris. What a block from Harris. Terrific work there. Here's Maxi. And it's off the back of the rim. No good. Detroit has gone three for seven from the perimeter during the second quarter. Here's Wright. And there's a minute 45 left in the second quarter. And he was fouled while in the act of shooting, so he'll take two free throws. That one on Harris. He drops the first. This is how you stay in the game. They're doing a beautiful job from the line. 100% this quarter. Thibel, he's checked in for Harris. That's also good. So he hits both free throws. Here's Maxi. A minute 31 left to play in the second quarter. Embiid inside. Plumley on him. Embiid gets the bucket. Embiid's got 16 points. You can tell his hustle inspires the entire squad. He really gets everyone so amped up. Here's Ellington. 11 points for him last game against Atlanta. comes off the front of the rim. He's been ice cold tonight. And you know, you look at the scoreboard guys, they really could have used this contribution. There's 47 seconds left in the first half. Pass to Maxi. Five on the clock. Yes, it's good. Gotta fight harder to get over those screens. Well, I'm gonna credit the screen. I mean, that's a good, strong pick he lays there. Now here's right. To the left side wing. Oh man, he can't get anything to fall. You can feel his frustration. And he's got to find other ways to contribute then because his shot making is not happening right now. Here's Maxi. And there's a pick. Pass to Embiid. Shoots over Grant. And here's another one for the Sixers. Well, part of the game plan was to neutralize the crowd. And guess what? Mission accomplished. And what's been impressive is that it's not been any one player. It's been a collective effort. Contributions from everybody. And through one half, it hasn't even been close. The Sixers on top, running away with this one. All right, now let's check in with Allie LaForce. Allie, what do you have? Joel, the reserves have been awesome so far. What are you seeing from them? Uh, the bench has helped us a lot. They, they've come in, they've scored the ball, they've got to stop, so we're going to need them to keep it going. Helps to have backup. Good luck in the second half. Thanks, Allie. After the break, we'll see you right back here to begin quarter number three. The 2K Sports Halftime Show.
Hey, welcome back. The first half mercifully coming to a close. I'm Ernie Johnson. Kenny's here. Shaq is here. Joel Embiid having an outstanding game. He had 18 points, 10 rebounds, and one assist. And from what we saw so far from the 76ers, Kenny, what's your takeaway? The reason they're out front, Ernie, Joel Embiid. His assertiveness on offense is so effective. Breaking through the defense and getting to his spot. They just can't stop him. Check. what do you think about the Pistons? Well, it's not a huge surprise they're getting crushed. Whew. All you got to do is look at the rebounding numbers. They were outworked on the board. They even have a hope of coming back. They got to pick up the intensity, man. And it's just about time now for the third quarter to get underway. The second half begins with very different goals for these teams. One side trying to mount a comeback, one side trying to protect their lead. What else can you say? Joel Embiid, an impressive effort here today. And given that he's just delivered a double-double through two quarters, I'm excited to see his stats at the end of the night. Yeah, he's got that locked-in look in his eyes tonight, and he's not going to start taking it easy. I think he's going to be going hard until that final whistle blows. And as we dive into the second half, we'll find out if the next two quarters are any different from the first two. So far, it's been a runaway. We've got Mason Plumley, Jeremy Grant out there with Blake Griffin. Then there's Derrick Rose, and it's Ellington in at the two-guard spot. That's the group for Detroit right now. Here he goes. And a foul called on the way up. So he'll take two from the free throw line. If you're talking about the family business being basketball, Jeremy Grant qualifies. He was a second-round pick in 2014 out of Syracuse, and his father, uncle, and brothers, all NBA players. Shooting two. First free throw is good. Jeremy has always had NBA length and athleticism. My question for you, Clark, could he develop his shooting touch? The answer to that, yes. And that's one of the things I think is a matter of just work and mechanics. And if you do that, you'll get better as a shooter. The last couple of seasons, he's shooting close to 40% from long range. And that certainly is rounding out his game. Well, Grant, you grew up no stranger to professional sports. Now, your dad had a distinguished career as a running back. How'd that help you become an NBA player? Well, aside from the fact that my dad told me to shoot my free throws and use the backboard, it really did help a lot, Brian. Uh, at a young age, to be around the game, in the locker room, on the sidelines, to understand what it means to be a professional, how hard you have to work, the dedication, the sacrifice. Having seen that and experienced that as a child, I think really helped me understand what was necessary and what needed to happen in order to become a professional basketball player. Hey, and shout out to Calvin for sticking with the fundamentals, too. <laughs> and he draws body contact. Looks like a blocking foul. He was in the shooting motion, so he'll head to the line. It goes on Mason Plumley. And the first one at the line is good. Boy, I tell you what, guys. Tobias Harris is a great scorer, and he's had multiple NBA stops, and I think you just have to simply say this guy has always been wanted. No good on the second free throw. The Pistons shooting just 24% on this one. Not great. Rose outside. Griffin outside. Let's the three fly. Rebounded by Green. 
76ers shooting at a decent clip. 45% for the game. Harris' shot is good. Yeah, they call him dancing Danny Green, and you can see why. Excellent offensive instincts there. And here's Detroit. Out to the wing. To the wing, right side. Pass to Ellington. Here's Rose. Now here's Griffin. Seven points in the game. And Blake Griffin is just an incredible athlete. Explosive and great balance and mobility. Powerful. A big, big guy who can flat out throw it down. And he also can pass it, too. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. First one falls. So one for two that time at the stripe. Philadelphia has gone one for two from outside the arc in this third quarter. Rose against Simmons. Pass to Embiid. Over Plumley. From seven. And finished off by Embiid inside. Embiid's got 20 points. And they've really managed to dominate inside. The play in the paint has gone almost entirely all their way. Driving to the basket, Ellington. Rebound by the 76ers. Embiid's got rebound number 12 now. Tenacity on the glass. Now Simmons. Green, the pass to Simmons. Fires for three. And it's Green missing. The Pistons have gone just one of three in the second half. Plumley up top. Rose outside. Back to Plumley. Over Embiid. It's wide right. Hits off the rim. The 76ers have gotten two of four shots to go since the break. Green finds Simmons. Back to Green. Pass to Simmons. Late clock. The Sixers need to put one up here. And it's Thibel missing. And Detroit is shooting a tough 22% from the field so far. Rose, the pass to Plumley. Back to Rose, to the right side. Harris against Griffin. He takes it in. The putback. Oh, he hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. Way to work the glass. Buffet style. Second chance bucket. They can make a big difference. Embiid passes to Green. Embiid with it. Back to Harris. There's the three. Griffin pulls down the board. You know, it hasn't been his best outing, but they still find themselves in the driver's seat here. Here's Rose. Oh, Simmons with the block. Well, you got to respect the athleticism and the willingness to defend that Simmons has. I mean, he's a skilled shot blocker, too. Green for three. And another miss by Philadelphia. Green's gone two for seven from the field. Grant outside. Here's Ellington. Five points in the game. Rose right side. Who poked away. Oh, stolen by Harris. All right, let's get a report from Ali. It was a quick turnaround between last season and this one. The original suggestions had training camp less than a month after the finals ended. That aroused some concern from the players' union, and the gap was widened, but not by much. Guys, no complaints here. It's time for NBA basketball. Yes, it is. Thanks, Ali.
You know, the moment everybody was waiting for with Ben Simmons happened last year. He made a few threes during games. It was a small sample size, no doubt about that, but it's what the fans wanted to see, and I'd like to continue to see him add that part to his game. And that one misses. All right, Clark, for Simmons, a step in the right direction. Agreed. I mean, as fantastic as he is, and believe me, he is, ball handling, passing, rebounding, speed, all of that is five-star level. But he's not a really good shooter, and that does lead to the floor being clogged up and unspaced because he's not that consistent a perimeter shooter. And that can have a negative effect on his team, but he's working on it. Shoot and I two. think he's going to make that a strength and not a weakness going forward. And he can't get the first one. I'll tell you what, coming straight to the NBA after just one year at Duke, Okafor making an immediate impact in the NBA. And he sinks the second. The 76ers have gotten just three of eight shots to go in the third quarter. Pass to Korkmaz. Three-pointer. The Sixers with another miss. For Detroit, they've gotten only two of seven shots to go in the third quarter. Back to Rose. Grant outside. to drive out to the right wing four on the clock here's Griffin and it's blocked by Embiid that long reach of Embiid is a real asset on defense covers a lot of territory and knows how to snuff out shooters here's Korkmaz now quiet so far offensively searching for his first points of the game he made the most of that opening teaching the defense a lesson Pass to Graham. Back to Rose. Right wing. Here's Mikhailuk. He's covered by Curry. Good chance here for Griffin. And he wills that one in. Sinking it right through the back of the iron. Griffin's got 10 points in the game. The shot that Griffin has worked on. Now you see how effective he is with it. Pass to Korkmaz. The three. Rebounded by the Pistons. Rose outside. The shot no good. Ooh, great D that time from Simmons. On the wing, Curry. Rebounded by the Pistons. Okafor's got seven rebounds in the game. Grant, left side. Pass to Okafor. That one falls. That is really outstanding work by Okafor. He's a real talent in the paint. And here's Simmons going inside. And it's Simmons with the jam. He just rises up and throws it down hard with one hand. That is such a go-to move for him. He holds out, nothing out. back on those. Does it as well as anybody, Sorry. fellas. Tremendous skill while in the air.
the Pistons. Wright comes in for Rose. And the 76ers making a change here. Well, you look at Joel Embiid. He's playing really well right now. And he's getting to the rack all game, and if they can't do a better job of keeping him out of the paint, they're in for a long night. Pass to Mikhail Luke. Back to Okafor. Now here's Jackson. Shot clock at six. Ooh, plenty of contact on that shot. And officials call the foul, and he'll take two free throws now. It goes on Seth Curry. Man, I love this kid's motor. Josh Jackson works hard all the time, but especially in the paint. Really gets after it and able to draw the foul. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And he drops the first. You know, when I saw Jackson back in college, I thought he was the best two-way player in the country. I mean, he's athletic, he's confident, he's aggressive. Man, he plays with the verve that you like to see a guy play with. And so Jackson nails both of them. Here's Maxi. Milton with it. Pass to Embiid. Shoots over Griffin. Embiid can't hit. And for the Pistons, they're shooting just 36% in the third. It's stolen by Howard. Here's Milton. Back to Embiid. Shoots over Griffin. It's good. Off the glass. Embiid's got 22. Joel Embiid has a nice shooting touch and does not lack for confidence and seems to be getting better in the mid-range area. Griffin outside. And Embiid with the block. Now here's Milton. Looking for his first basket still in this one. To the middle. And there's Embiid. That one's good. And the assist by Howard. The Pistons shooting just 24% in this one. Not great. Pass to Griffin. Tips. Now Milton. Oh, there's the alley. And it's Howard finishing it off. Great reach that time by Howard. He went way upstairs to throw that one down. Can pretty much get any pass that's around the goal. Now here's Griffin. Embiid covers. Griffin shot is off. Boy, just cannot buy a bucket, guys. I tell you what, that's a painful quarter for him, and it's painful for me to watch, too. Here's Maxi. Oh, and he got fouled on his way up. He'll head to the line to shoot two. That one's off. Inconsistent from the line here in the second half, but they're still ahead. Good on the second one. And so it's Detroit with it. Things just don't seem to be clicking for them offensively. Yeah, they really need to find a way to get back on track. Griffin against Howard. And it's blocked. And it goes out of bounds. That one off Howard. And we've got to see that sensational mobile one block again. An emphatic rejection. you got to appreciate that kind of forceful defense.
six on the shot clock. Can they get it? It's Griffin with the drive. The shot comes out. Now the 76ers take it the other way. For three. They get it again. And it's Howard finishing it off. To me, this is Howard's specialty. This is his bread and butter thing here. We all know this guy loves to throw it down whenever he can. He's pretty good at it. Now here's Griffin. Ten points for him. This has not been his best quarter. You know, guys, it seems to me as though he's over anxious. He seems to be pressing, trying too hard, moving too fast. Just needs to calm himself down and wait for good shots. Here's Embiid. Up and in on the layup. Embiid's got 26 points. Tell you what, the offensive game of MB ridiculous. He's scoring so many ways. 51 seconds left in the third. Here's Griffin. Embiid with a nice defensive effort. Philadelphia shooting around 45% since the break. Howard up top. Draw the foul. He'll head to the line for two. Nice job that time using that strong body of his inside. Once Howard has positioning, I think you got to wrap him up. down the first one. The 76ers making a switch here. Harris has checked in. Both good from the line that time. 32 seconds left in the third quarter here. Right outside. Pass to Jackson. Over to the left wing. Just five to shoot. Trying to get back on track. And he lays it up and in. Jackson's got four points in the quarter. Yep, a beautiful touch inside. See, it's not easy just because you're close to the goal to score. You've got to have poise and a nice touch. Jackson has both. Harris. Oh, at the buzzer! Wow! I didn't think he was going to get it off in time. Oh, wow. I agree. I mean, and to have the composure to lock in, get off a shot he feels confident about, that's good work. At the end of the third quarter, a huge lead. This one may have already been decided. Sixers ahead, running away with it. And we're just moments away from the start of quarter number four. Stay with us. a lot of drama down the stretch as we head into the fourth quarter, but stranger things have happened. Philadelphia dictating the flow. Taking a look at Philadelphia. We've got Matisse Thibel. He's out there with Maxi. Furkan Korkmaz is out there with Dwight Howard. And it's Poirier in at the power forward. Now, here's Howard. And here's what the Detroit business schedule looks like. On Friday, they'll defend home court against the Indiana Pacers. And then on Sunday, they'll face off against Kyle Lowry and the Toronto Raptors. And that game against the Nets is the second game of a back-to-back, -back, so you know there'll be some heavy legs out there. Playing that much basketball in that Two short shots. amount of time really course. takes its toll on your body. He's off on the first. With each year, Grant, it seems like we see more and more great players coming out of Europe. And that's so true, B.A. I mean, think about some of these great young stars, Doncic or Jokic and others. I mean, it speaks to how the game has become a global game. 
The NBA has marketed and sold this game all over the world for years, and now we're seeing the benefit of those efforts. And I'll tell you what, over 25% of the players in the league right now were born outside of the U.S. So it just illustrates the growth of the game, the success of the game, and the elite players from all over the world playing in the NBA today. Bradley, he's checked in for the Sixers. Here's Hayes, the shot off that time. And Philadelphia the other way now. Dybul on the wing, defended by Jackson. Their strategy has been pretty simple here in the second half. Attack from three-point range. Certainly, I mean, they saw a weakness in the perimeter defense and took advantage of it. Now here's Hayes, to the wing on the left. Here's Bay. Just four to shoot. Here's Jackson. Soft touch off the glass. And you know, Kevin, I don't think you can let Jackson get comfortable. I mean, especially in the pick and roll, because in that situation, he's platinum level. Here's Thibel. Pass to Maxi. He shoots a three. And Bay pulls it down. And you know, even though they're on top, they're winning. I mean, they could use more from him. Trying to shut the door on this one. Here's Stewart. Just over a minute and a half played here in the fourth. Can't cash it in from close range. Philadelphia's gone one for two from deep in this fourth quarter. Pass to Thibel. Here's Korkmaz. Softly drops in the floater. The floater can be a tricky shot, but that's the right choice. The Pistons have gotten only one of five to fall here in the fourth. They've been having major problems offensively. Definitely in a bit of a dry spell. Jackson, left side. For Philadelphia, they've gone two of three to open the fourth quarter. Outside, Thibel. Pass to Maxi. One of the more memorable moments of the bubble was when the Milwaukee Bucks took a stand and decided not to play. Clark, that has to be one of the more courageous things you can do as a team. Agreed. No doubt about it, B.A., and it had impact across the sports landscape. Clearly, the NBA teams stepped front and center. Milwaukee was the catalyst, and then ultimately we saw it happen in other sports as well. An example of courage and commitment to use the platform you're given as a pro athlete to try to make a worldly difference and very impressive and inspiring. Couldn't be prouder of the players for taking that stand from an informed Shooting and two. committed perspective. And the first one at the line is good. And the 76ers making a change here. Simmons is checked in. And he makes both free throws. Here's Thibel. Pass to Simmons. Here's the pick. Driving inside. Here's Korkmaz. Good. Korkmaz has got four points in the quarter. Time and time again, they're creating good looks from close range. And even under pressure in close, I think they've still done a good job maintaining concentration and converting the opportunities. Now here's Jackson. Blocked! Outside Simmons. Pass to Poirier. Left side Simmons. The shot's good. Yeah, their defense is starting to wear down. That's three straight buckets at the rim. 
Well, Grant, one area where we've seen great advancement is how we're seeing injuries treated. The rehabbing of these injuries and the speed in which players are coming back is unprecedented. It really is, B.A., and certainly I've experienced my fair share of injuries. And over the last 20-plus years, uh, the advancement uh, in, in not only treating injuries, but preventative measures so you don't get hurt. And, and so... Uh, teams now, whether it's load management, understanding the importance of nutrition, rest, recovery, all of these things factor in to the sophistication level now that's applied to players. And so, in a way, I wish I was 25 right now in today's NBA uh, with all the technology and uh, sophistication available to teams. Now here's Simmons. Pass to Korkmaz. Shoots over Jackson. Korkmaz, no good. The Pistons shooting just 21% from the floor. Here's Dumboya from downtown. Detroit, no good that time either. And here's Thibault. Pass to Korkmaz. Fires from deep. The Pistons clear it. Jackson with it. Now Hayes. Simmons defending. Here's Dumboya to the wing. Right side. There's Jackson with the three. So hard. Actually impossible to cut into the lead when you have a guy struggling this badly. Now Simmons. Well, Grant, you've seen the NBA from just about every angle, as a player, a broadcaster, and now an owner. Has your perspective changed over the years about the NBA? You know, B.A., my perspective definitely has changed. For so long, you only saw things through the lens of being a player. Uh, now, as a broadcaster working with you and in ownership, you see a whole different side to the league. I understand the business aspect, the incredibly difficult decisions that the league has to make, but also each individual franchise. Uh, it's not as easy as maybe I thought it was as a player, but I certainly have a healthy respect uh, for the incredible decisions that are involved in this game. Again, the miss by the Pistons. The 76ers have gone 6 for 11 here in the fourth quarter. With the floater. A rebound by Stewart. And the shot goes. <laughs> this run has been fueled by their Matador defense. Detroit has gone 0 for 3 here in the fourth. Now here's Hayes. Pass to Dumboya. And they're going to count that bucket. And they'll send him to the line. It could be a three-point play. It's not easy to work the ball inside in this league. But they've done it all night. The Pistons making a switch here. Makai Luke's checked in. And the 76ers making a change here. One shot. In an era of social media grab, even referees are jumping in, trying to illustrate to fans why certain calls are made, where you stand on transparency. It's all about transparency, B.A. Look, they don't come over to clarify these calls because they like us, <laughs> although we're, we're pretty good guys. Well, you are. But it's all about the theme of the NBA being transparent, making sure the fans at home understand uh, why a call is made. I love it. I think it's a fantastic uh, addition that the league has made. Well, we saw it in the bubble, the way they're explaining calls, and with an open mic, not just for us to relay the information, but now we can hear it directly from the officials. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. The first free throw is good. The 76ers making a switch here.
So he gets them both. Something we see every year, Clark, in the playoffs. Analysts and players making guarantees about a series. How much bulletin board material does that provide? <laughs> Man, it's so funny sometimes to hear players comment on what analysts or other members of the media have said in regards to dismissing or disrespecting them. It's comical to me, quite honestly. At this level, you shouldn't necessarily need additional external motivation but if it shows up then guys will use it to their advantage and let you know about how they've used it to their advantage too <laughs> to Thibel. Here's Maxi. The floater. Deflected! And here's Hayes. Here's Stewart. Here's Domboya. Philadelphia has gotten one of three to fall from downtown here in the fourth. Pass to Maxi. And one thing we saw in the bubble, Clark, extra room by the out-of-bounds lines. Would you like to see more of that during regular play? I would love to see it, B.A., but the reality is those seats under there are actually pretty good revenue drivers. And we know at the end of the day, finances will be a big part of the equation. And also those who cover the game get some great shots being underneath. So I don't think we'll be able to see that kind of open space, but I would love for it to find its way into the game if it were at all possible, but I don't think so. Shot clock at six to the right side. And again, the Pistons missing. Philadelphia dictating the flow. Pass to Maxi. Over Hayes. Maxi, that's good. Just continuing to pile it on, refusing to let up. Yeah, and you know, that is some shaky and shoddy defensive work. They gotta tighten it up. Now here's Hayes. Here's Bay. Loose. Thibel with it. Here's Maxi. Thibel on the wing. Clock at six. Pass to Poirier. Here's Maxi. Over Hayes. And it's Maxi missing. Oh, you have to love the spin move there. He couldn't quite gather himself for the shot. Well, the scoreboard tells you everything you need to know about this one. A great showing here for the 76ers. And you don't usually see this kind of blowout, but tonight they delivered the punishment. I mean, what's so impressive is they never wavered in their approach. They just kept at it and showed they were without a doubt the better team. Here's Poirier. Pass to Maxi. And there's the drive. It's tips. And that's out of bounds. Philadelphia will retain possession. Fifty-six seconds left in the fourth quarter here. The Pistons shooting a very low 20% for this game so far. To win the drought! Blocked! And it's going to be out of bounds. The Pistons will retain possession. Get 
43 seconds left in the fourth quarter here. Well, it's a make or miss league. Sometimes the Jays just don't fall. It wasn't a bad shot. And another miss by Philadelphia. And here's Detroit. Inside. And down it goes. Dumped it through off a beautiful setup. He almost brought the basket down on top of himself. Oh, there's hang time, and then there's a time to hang. Well, you got to make that moment last. Enjoy it for as long as you can. Here's Maxi. So no problem for Philadelphia as they get the win. A statement road victory. So impressive. Statement indeed, B.A. It was in enemy territory, but they controlled the game and took the crowd completely out of it. That's how you win on the road. And now let's check in with Allie LaForce with the player of the game. Allie. Joel, in the past, you've certainly had your critics, and you have not run from them. What are you looking to prove out there? Uh, just being dominant, so I want every time people hear my name, I want them to know that I'm a dominant player. Well, you do have the ability to dominate every single night. Good luck moving forward. Thanks, Ali. Great interview once again. Well, folks, that's going to do it for now. For Grant Hill, Clark Kellogg, and Ali LaForce, this is Brian Anderson thanking you for watching. We'll see you next time.